afternoon, people. This is uh, our first annual podcast at Exodus Transitional Services. My name is Eric Benson. On the side of me, and this is Anthony Colon. He's, he's also a success story in his own right. We are overshadowed. When I say we, I'm talking about those men and women that's home and that's staying home and that's successful in their own right. And so this platform is here to actually highlight those individuals that's doing uh, great things in society and giving back to society. To my left, I have uh, Mr. Julio Medina and uh, Ms. Diana Ortiz. So yes, I uh, thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Eric. Um, Exodus partnering with Success After Lockdown is for us, you know, this is no better way to launch our podcast series. So we're honored to be a part of this as well. Uh, so my name is Julio Medina. I'm the founder, executive director of Exodus Transitional Community. Exodus is a nonprofit in East Harlem that works, at, as well as Newburgh and Poughkeepsie, that works with women and men being released from prison, as well as the preventive side, making sure we can stop some of our young people from going in. Um, again, 23 years old. I started this when I came home. I did 12 years. I think for me, the, the wake-up call was seeing the goodness in people when I was inside, you know? Mm. You, you recognize the humanity when we're all in a cage together. We recognize that we want something better for ourselves. And for me, the birth of Exodus was that. Looking around, you know, you're in a cell and you're saying, this ain't me. My life wasn't created to be this. There's something else out there for me. And, you know, you start the work. You start the work inside. And, and it was just a natural succession once I did get released to be able to do this work, to be able to have a platform for sisters and brothers when they come home, considering the job market was so horrific. So, you know, again, we've been in, in existence the last 23 years. Um, started with myself and a couple other people. Uh, to this day, we have, a, I got a staff of about 300 people. Yeah. We manage six hotels for the city, for people coming out of Rikers Island, as well as state prisons. Uh, we have a wellness center, I have a, a, a substance abuse clinic that, that you'll hear Dana talk some about. We have a, a Center for Trauma Innovation. I have an alternative to incarceration program. Um, I got about 50 staff going into Rikers Island now. Um, we're trying to reduce some of the violence we see with our young people right at this point. You know, we see a lot of gang violence. For us, that's a priority. Um, and what you see now, we're in our music studio. So we have our Exodus Productions where we try and, you know, I always say we're going to trick some young folk. They all think they can rap, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to trick them. I'm going to say, come on in. You know, once they're in here, we got them. You know, and that's when we really do the work, right? Who better Who better than us to tell them, you you could avoid this path, right? You don't have to go to prison. You ain't got to be in Comstock or Clinton Mm -hmm. locked in 23 hours a day, right? There's another way to do this. Um, So for us, Exodus, you know, it's, 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 it's what we do daily. It's the lives that we live, man. I think the biggest success we have is, about 85% of my staff has gone through the justice system. So I got brothers and sisters here who served 40 years, who served six months. Oh, uh, right. But for me, that was an important ingredient to make sure Exodus work. Who better than us to tell somebody, there's a hole there, man. I walked through that hole already. You ain't got to walk through that hole. Promote with them. You know? So, yeah, so we got a, a team that's amazing. And for us, man, we're just trying to transform New York City. Newburgh and Poughkeepsie, and put another face on the space when we talk about, you know, uh, rehabilitation, when we talk about coming home, when we talk about those things, you know, we, we are not, and I think I heard you say this, Anthony, the worst moment of our lives. Man. Yeah, we did this, that happened, but this is who we are today. And I think we have to get not only folk, local people, right, but the country to see this is who we are today. We can't be, you know, walking around with a scarlet letter the rest of our lives, right? So we get penalized anywhere we go, right? The felony, Kind of not, yeah, that, that happened then, but this is everything else I'm doing. You know, I'm going to tell you a quick story because it's, it, it's, it shows the impact of the felony as well. You know, so I got my son. He's, he's, my son is 16 now. My daughter's 14. And my son, I don't know, three, four years ago had a trip, one of these overnight trips. Now, mind you, I don't, I don't but, you know, I'm on the governor's council. I'm on the mayor's council. I'm, anything you can do in New York, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm probably a part of it. And I don't say this in a boisterous way. I just mm-hmm. say this to exemplify a story. Oh, right. So with all this I've done, and I sat with the governor, I sat in meetings, and been able to do all this. My son has an overnight trip. They're doing this little camping thing for the school. So I'm like, yo, we in. Meanwhile, he's like, yo, damn, you camp? I'm like, man, I camped all my life. Meanwhile, I'm in the South Bronx. <laughs> I ain't know nothing about camping. He ain't gonna know that. Right? I'm gonna tell him, no, we, we, we gonna do this. No. 
They bring the form. He bring the form home. He's excited. Yo, dad, come on, man. Let's, we ready? I got the trip. I bought the camping out. Like, we doing this. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? Mm. One of the questions, you know? Wow. So it doesn't matter mm -hmm. the success. It wasn't a timeline on that question. It was, have you ever been committed of, of a felony? Mm -hmm. So sadly, because I don't want to scar him and those students around him, so I said, you know what? I couldn't go no one. Why don't you go with our uncle, blah, 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 this, that, the other. So I, couldn't, I didn't go to the trip wow. because I didn't want that exposure on him, you know, at, at that early age. So I think it's, it's something that we have to really look at and talk mm -hmm. about, right? This is not, we are not the worst moment of our lives. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to talk about some other things and what we're doing now. So with that said, I thank y'all. All right, this is a big launch for us. Eric, Anthony, you know, we appreciate being a part of this. And I want to pass it off to uh, Diana Ortiz. Diana Ortiz. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Part of this, I hope to contribute um, what I can. I mean, I've been home for 16 years now. I've been with Exodus for 13. Um, after meeting Julio and finding about the work that he's been doing, um, I was awarded. Um, uh, well, I was given an award by Julio, the Julio Medina Award. Oh, say that again. What's the name of that? <laughs> um, because when I came home, I had lifetime parole, mm. um, and so I was supposed to be on parole for the rest of my life. And I didn't know that when I, you know, was released. And when I was told that, um, we started to do some advocacy, and and we were able to get a bill together, and go up and pitch it to all of the senators. Um, we had gotten the bill passed. Um, we put a lot of work in it, and Absolutely. so after three years, I was released from parole. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to acknowledge the work that I was able to do in that advocacy work, and so that's how I met Julio. And when I came to Exodus, I was like, wow, this is amazing, the stuff that he's doing, his vision, how he sees the work that we need, because when I came home, I didn't know about Exodus, and so I didn't have that support. Um, but knew that I had learned enough while in prison that I can contribute to the work that's being done here. And because this is my passion. Um, I was doing work with kids in another organization and it's similar work to the work that I was doing inside. Um, I was working with women getting connected to their children. So when I came home, I was able to work with children to get connected to their parents. Um, and it was great work, it was rewarding work. But to do work for us, for people like me, mm -hmm. serving a lot of time, coming home and really needing the support to figure it out, I said, this is the work that I want to do. I want to help them figure that out. So now I'm overseeing two um, major programs. Um, they're um, the mental health and the substance use. And we serve right now about 270 people a year. Um, and you know, we're looking to continue to grow it when people start to really want to talk about those things, those challenges that they will have. You know, because it's, it's true to what the faith, or the, the mission of Exodus, right? We, we have bondage, wilderness, and the promised land. And we know the bondage, you know, it's either substance use or it's incarceration. Um, and so when, we, when we're when we there, all we think about is that promised land. I know I wanted it, you know, I'm coming home, I'm, this is what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. But right. I never thought about that struggle, that wilderness, and so that I love to talk to people about. There is a wilderness. There, uh, there are those challenges. Those are those things that we're going to have to talk about and address and figure out until we can get to that promised land. When we can have that house and the car and the, the family and all of Absolutely. those things. Absolutely. Those will come. You know? Yes. Yep. And so I love the work that I'm able to do here and how right. I'm able to do it. You know, things like that inspire me. So mm -hmm. I always looked at Julio as well as you, Diane, as, as my big brother and big sister, mm -hmm. you know, when y'all came through when I was uh, in Sing Sing. And, uh, and that, you know, that's what helped me to build this platform now that I'm building. Because, you know, when y'all came through, it was like, this is what I want to do. I want to give back to the community. That's all I seen. Um, I remember you was uh, like a case manager for my son, you know, <laughs> through, through Osborne, and you know that's how we met. And Julio, he was my professor, you know, in Say that again. class. <laughs> 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 professor Julio Molina, yes, you know, and he and he actually, um, I I think set set this this uh this bar for where I'm at in life, you know, um, 
coming home August 10th, 2020. You know, and um, I'm currently living in Albany, New York, but I make my way down here because this is the catalyst right here. Mm -hmm. You know, everything revolves around Exodus, and and we all here. It's like we all home. He he had this home waiting for us. Mm -hmm. So you know, he's been home longer than my, most of us out here. And so this home has been waiting, and I've been waiting for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And this opportunity mm -hmm. is here for us. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I see it. You know, definitely going. You know, somewhere but, really and, big. And let me say something real quickly, Bob, because, you know, yes, I was able to, to go into the class and teach, but I think one of the things that stood out was the passion that you had and the remorse that you shared, mm. that sincere remorse that you shared, but that sticks out for me. I'm getting chills talking yeah, about it. Because I saw you crying in class, mm -hmm. you know? I saw how hurt you was when you committed this crime. And I wish people could really see what authentic transformation and rehabilitation looks like. Because you embody that, bro. I was there when there was no cameras and there was no podcast. And there was none of this. And you was crying in class, brother. You know? So that's critical, man. I think it's important that the world know that, man. That you really understood uh, the victim. You, you lived it every day. You, you, you know, you were hurt every day by it. And I think, you know, it, it, it just says so much about your character. So thank you. you You're going to make me cry now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm an emotional person and I appreciate that, you know, from the bottom of my heart. You know, um, like, you know, this is what this is what I lived for, you know, and I you told me this before, you know, and I see I felt this, you know, and I felt it. And I say this with all humility that I'm blessed, you know, for being able to wake up. Mm faster than other brothers. You know, mm -hmm. some brothers it took 10, 15 years to wake mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. but you know, I woke up, I got it mm -hmm. early mm -hmm. in, in that 27 years and six months. Mm -hmm. And and I'm just uh, honored to hear that from you, you know, and for someone to see my genuineness, mm -hmm. yeah. because you know, this is what I live for. I did wrong from 14 years old to 20 years old, mm -hmm. all negative. Mm -hmm. So now I know nothing but positivity. Mm -hmm. I don't want nothing else in my life. Mm -hmm. And you inspired that you. in me, and I appreciate you Thank and you. Diana as well. And, and, that, and that and that is amazing. You know, I know Eric since I was a kid. We grew up together. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? And when he came home and he called me and just speaking to him over the phone, like we had to talk every weekend uh, for about two hours mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. weekend, and just hearing him. And if you knew him then, right, and like probably before another episode, but if you knew him then mm -hmm. and you hear him now and like you said, that emotion, mm -hmm. right? Behind this crime. You got a lot of people that commit crime that mm -hmm. can justify mm -hmm. that means of committing that crime, yeah, right? Yeah. I think the key thing is accountability mm -hmm. and responsibility. Come on. And I think that once you accept that, it sets you free. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's what I think it takes for a person to reach the optimum level mm. of success in their own right, no matter what it may be, but to set yourself free. Yeah. Because I believe that as long as that you keep making excuses for the crimes that you commit, you're never going to get past that. Mm. Right? He accepted that fact. Yeah. I got to accept the fact that, you know, my crimes, I did not because I, I, I was a, a product of my environment. I made my environment the product that it became. Mm by putting the drugs out there, right? <clears throat> so now it's to change the dynamics of what we was taught and what we're gonna teach, right? And it's amazing the impact that you have mm -hmm. and that you got the work that you had doing. And I'm looking up here that the 259J, mm -hmm. right? The discharge of sentence, <laughs> how amazing that is you know, like this thing here is like really mind blowing. I don't think a person can really cap capture what that means for a person to mm. go and serve some time and sit there in front of a judge. And the judge say, well, I'm sentencing you to 15 to life or 10 to life or 18 to life, right? They hear that life and they think it's shut down. Mm -hmm. Brain is shut down. I'm never getting out. I'm never going to get out that rut. But to have the opportunity to come out of the system and to do something positive and to apply to get a discharge 
from that life sentence of becoming a slave mm-hmm. into the system that'll keep you captivated and keep you in the recidivism rate for mm-hmm. the littlest thing that's possible. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. And I thank you on behalf of all the brothers and sisters out there that are serving, you know, life sentence behind their regular sentence when they come home. Cause now they have a shot to actually cut that chain and move forward. Mm-hmm. So it was nice to be able to change how people saw us. Like, this is how we look. This is how we act after. (laughs) You know, we're not that one worst moment. We're not that time. Yeah, I was 18. I committed this crime. But now, here I am. Like, why should I be chained to something um, for the rest of my life? I remember we did mock paroles. And you had an (laughs) ex-parole And I would just like for you to just speak about that. Just just share that experience with us. Because I was looking, I was on the inside looking. You know, I was from the inside looking out and, you know, um, to be out here now and to actually, you know, remember that and experience that all over again in my mind, it was really impactful with um, just my transition and coming home and, you know, and doing, you know, getting involved with this and with the criminal justice system. So I would like for you to just just speak about that experience with being with an ex-parole commissioner and doing my paroles in a, in a prison with this person. And how, did, how was that for you? Uh, yeah. Well, the good thing about that was he released me. <laughs> so it made it a little easier. Um, it was the first time I met him. And um, after, he, after the first four boards, he was on the fifth one. I thought it was to just nail, you know, that last nail on the coffin, like, if you have the chairman at your parole hearing, this is to say you're never coming home. Mm. You know, so even when I saw him there, I'm gonna cry. Um, it was scary. Okay. Mm. You know, you've mm. gone through four boards, and now you see uh, the chairman mm. um, with two other commissioners, and I'm like, wow, I'm never coming home. Mm. Um, so, and then you know, even through that process, um, I went in three times, and so they called me in. I had my hearing. Go back, you sit, and you wait. Mm-hmm. You call me back in. And I'm like, oh, no, this is not good. <laughs> I go back, and then they call me back in. And then he's the person who said, um, Miss Ortiz, we're not going to call you back in. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. Um, but I was released. Um, and so knowing that he was that person that wanted to make sure that I was made it easier. Mm-hmm. Um, because he may have seen something in me and maybe other people that he can look beyond our crimes. Mm. You can be the person who can say and validate, and he did, he validated um, this bill that we were able to pass. And so being able to to go and kind of see a changed man, a man who says, you know what, I should have seen this a long time ago, but there for the grace of God, right? Like this could have been me or could have been somebody that I know. And so it was easy to get Bob, who passed away last year, right? Mm-hmm. Um, to to kind of now do this new mission. Now you don't have to like hold us and and, and condemn us, and and so it was easy to 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 be able to have Bob be part of this process. He is the one who helped us with the bill, so he just wanted to be in everything, anything that can change lives. He wanted to be a part of. He wanted to leave this world. And we didn't know he was going to leave it so soon, but he did want to leave it knowing that he did good stuff. That he wasn't just a, a parole commissioner. And, and Diana, you had that impact on, on Bob Dennison because, you know, his history, you know, not that there's anything wrong with Papa, Republican, staunch, conservative, yeah. going in front of him, you're getting Absolutely. hit with two years. Mm-hmm. You know, his record was, you know, he, like, really he ran bad. that board. Yeah. And, 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 and Diana, you know, I, I want you to downplay that. Not only did he go in there three times and then freed you, but then how you helped shape his future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Powerful. I think that's something that, you know, yes. you helped shape. He's, he was at every space mm-hmm. because of Diana yeah. and the impact you had on him and how he began to transform his own thinking around, wow, these are good people. Mm-hmm. So I just want to applaud you, you know, and what you've been able to create. Because, you know, after that, as you see, the commissioners are now, you know, they're listening. Yeah. yeah. They're listening. Here's the, ir- the, the ironic thing is, right, we always hear this all the time in prison, right? 
prison has the most creative and smartest people, <laughs> right? <laughs> But well, when you're sitting on the outside and you have mm. to judge a person whether to be released or not, mm. you don't see that, mm. right? And I remember, and I don't know they still do it, you know, boy, when you go see the parole board, yeah. they wouldn't tell you right away you have to wait for that letter. Right, right, yeah, yeah. And we used to know if you were getting released or not by the thickness of the envelope. We had to, we had to think when you, knew, you knew you were getting hit. So when the, when the CO walked down the gallery with, with, with that still envelope, good. hey, you got your head, and, they, and people just be with their mirror looking down, and like, man, I should think, my guy. But is it 24 or 12? You know what I mean? Like, I remember my last release, you know, I, unfortunately for me, I, I maxed out. I didn't see all. I maxed out. You know, um, and I kept getting hit at the board, but by by all rights, I deserved it right, right, right. because I went in there a knucklehead, and I stood in there a knucklehead mm -hmm. the whole time. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and it wasn't until these last five years that I yet did now, right. four and a half years ago, that actually really buckled me down to say, "Listen, what's going to change? Mm -hmm. Like, what's going to change?" And I literally sat back and I educated myself. I took every class available to myself in the feds. I started learning things and I did one thing I've never done before is I took some advice mm. and I created a vision board. And not only did I create that vision board, but I put things that were realistic to me that I knew that I can obtain I can obtain. Mm. And I swear by that. Right? Is that when you find someone who gives you some motivation, that can give you some inspiration who's been where you've been through, right? And they're trying to give you a blueprint or something. We can either take it, right? And don't nothing great come without hard work, dedication, mm. blood, sweat, and tears, mm. right? We want that instant gratification that mm. as people, we think everyone owes us something, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. And my wife always told me, babe, why couldn't you just do what everybody else did and just been a rap or just snitch or just told? You know, you have to get your time lesson. And my own response to her was always this. God allowed me to do the time I needed to do to be where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I would have become of my life had I would have went that last yeah. time for a year and a half and came mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. Maybe I would have still think I could still scam people. Okay. I could still rob people. I could mm -hmm. still do stuff mm -hmm. and get away with it. Mm -hmm. So these last five years was the nail that really made me open up my eyes and say, listen, I have such potential. My whole life, people always told me I was smart, but I just used it in the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And I surround yeah. myself now with, you know, I tell people all the time, I surround myself with people that want to be like, that's going to inspire me, that's going to motivate me, that's going to push me, that's going to see vision. And I read this book one time called Daring Greatly, mm. and it talked about, you know, the biggest reason why people's dreams die is because they share it with the wrong person. Mm. You know, and if you want to get to that next level of caliber, you got to surround yourself with the Julio Medina, mm. with the Diane Ortiz, with the Eric Benson, mm. you know, with the Gerard Harris. Mm. You got to surround yourself with these people that's in your life that can actually bring some substance. Mm. That, yes, because you made a mistake in your path, doesn't mean you have to stay stuck there. That we do have a lot of talent, we do have a lot of heart, compassion, and empathy. Um, and change is possible, mm. okay? You just have to want it and chase after it. But I don't want to miss this to, to also uh, thank you as well, Diana, because like you really changed the dynamics of the system. Mm. Like we get off parole, lifers get off in three years. Mm -hmm. Like this, it's amazing when I think about it, the gravity of that is, you know, and you know, to, and you did, you played a, a huge role in all of these men and women lives today. And now, you know, not only is a lot of us, are a lot of us preparing to come home and do right, you know, and be successful in life. You know, now we have that opportunity to, to you know, getting off that paper in three years and actually, you know, going to higher heights. And, and so your success is why I'm here. Like, I'm living today off of you. Mm -hmm. You're the reason why I breathe, mm -hmm. you know, and I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. And I know that we all appreciate you. And I just want you to know that. And always remember that, that you set a mark on life and society. You will be the reason why 
society will dispel the stereotype that they have of men and women like us, you know, that go, go in and they think that, you know, we come out to go back in. No, there's, there's men and women <laughs> like you and I that's coming home and that's successful in our own right. And that's what we're here to highlight, success after lockdown today. And thank you again. Thank you. I mean, there were others. There were many men behind this, and um, there were other women. But I just pushed it harder because it's definitely a woman's voice. They needed to see that we are also part of this. Like, this is not just a male problem. This is not just a minority problem. This is a bigger uh, problem. problem. And this is yeah. yeah. And they needed to see what we look like. This is, you know, this is what we look like. That's right. And see, I'm a part of the universe, so I absolutely believe that, you know, your story and what you're doing, it, it affected everything. The women's rights today and how, you know, they in the position. I, I believe that wholeheartedly, that this is all a part of the same, we all a part of the same universe. And that's just my, you know, belief. And I, I, I'm so honored to be in the hands of you and Julio today. And I appreciate you. Yeah. This is definitely something that's needed as well to, to help in this. Not, not for nothing. I don't know about how Eric feels. I'm sure they or everybody feels the same way. Like we could sit here and we can like, talk. <laughs> yeah, we, we can talk all day. <laughs> you know what I mean? We have to. Yeah, we do. But we have to do a part two. And our main question is: right, If y'all had some advice to give to anyone that's in prison, who's out in the street, or just coming home, what would be that advice? Well, um, um, believe in that vision, that, that your circumstances at the moment is just that. It's at the moment. Those mm -hmm. are those circumstances. This isn't your future reality. One day you will be home. Mm -hmm. Prepare while you're there. You know, when doing my tour, I, I used that. That was my education. I got some manners. I did everything. I said, you know what? At some point when you look up, I got tired of waking up, seeing men every damn day. Breath smelling, mm -hmm. you know, brothers killing each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like this ain't me no more. Right. And Absolutely. understand that for folks that inside, that this too shall pass. This mm. is this is just for the moment. Prepare in this moment, because you will be home. Gain the skills that are necessary, man. Connect to someone who's doing the right thing. It's important because the reality, man, we can create. That's the one thing folk don't know. You know, when you locked up. We're the most creative people, prior to getting locked up, right? You know, I was prosecuted by the Organized Crime Task Force of the Northern District, right? We did all type of stuff to bring drugs all over the country, right? Mm -hmm. We're the most creative people in the world mm -hmm. when we're doing wrong, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Now when you want to do right, right? When, at least for me, I serve a higher power, right? I serve a God that tells me, man, brother, you're invincible to some of the stuff you can do, mm -hmm. right? So when you're serving in this other area, we have to be much more creative than we were, you know, when we did that other thing. Yeah. So for me, I just think it's important, sisters and brothers, y'all locked up right now. This reality will change. Trust me. I was in the same spot. All of us in the room was in the same mm -hmm. spot. And I mean, we changed our reality, but we put in some work, too. Yeah. Right? I always say, man, never again. That can never be my reality again. Mm -hmm. I never forget, you know, the strip searches after the visit. Mm -hmm. I keep those horrific That's things right. at the forefront. Mm -hmm. So I never forget that, man. Yeah. You notice the, the, the police searching you and, oh, no, no, mm -hmm. that can't happen again. Mm -hmm. Look at those worst things right now and tell yourself that can't happen no more. Mm -hmm. right? right? The reality, the future is yours. It's bright. We're out here. We're making things happen. And you can be a part of that. Wherever you at, in New York and whatever state you at, there's organizations that are doing this work. Connect with them. Mm -hmm. So I think that's my advice to, to some of the folks that are there now. Nice. So thank you. What about you, Ms. Ortiz? Well, for me, I think what happened, happened to all of us, and it's like once I gained consciousness, once I took responsibility for why I was there, how I got there, and then decided that I didn't need to be part of the system. Like, I wanted to be somebody different, and I got that through education. I got that through reading, right? Reading other people's stories and living other people's lives through, you know, vicariously. And so those things allowed me to become the person that I am and want to make sure that the people around me were doing the same thing. I'm going to school, I'm encouraging you to go to school. And it's like surround yourself with people who are just going to give you positive, right? That mm -hmm. positive Absolutely. effect so that you're constantly moving in that direction. I didn't know if I was coming home. 
I knew I was going to be in prison. Nobody could have made that any different every single board, every single year that passed. But I knew I had people around me that I can help. And I knew that I wanted to be that person. So that's where it started for me. Um, I wanted to help people. I wanted to kind of just be that support, that positive energy if I could be. Um, and then connecting myself to Exodus so that I can continue in that same spirit. And I think people inside can do it. And I always say, if they say one thing they need, you always need support. You always need somebody. Mm -hmm. You can't mm -hmm. do it alone. Right. It doesn't happen alone. Absolutely. So success after lockdown will follow, you know, brothers and sisters like ourselves and their families and what they're doing in life and just they <coughs> so their success in their own right. You know, and um, Julio, I appreciate this platform and I look forward to working with you in the near future. For sure. You know, For sure. Exodus is honored members. to be a part of this as well. I just want you to know, but we Thank feel you. just as honored to be with success after lockdown with you, Eric, with Anthony, with your team, as you are with us. You know, I just want you to know that I, I, we, we created something that's for us, you know, so this is a natural fit for you. So, again, it's our honor to be a part of it and to help launch this. So, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, man, I, I'm truly honored and privileged to, yeah. to be in this room with you guys yeah. and what you're doing. Thank you. Thank like, you. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you. you know? yeah. 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 Yeah.